Hello everyone! The band that I've chosen to do my lecture presentation on was Queen. Queen is a British rock band formed in London in the 1970s. Members of their group included Freddie Mercury, who was lead vocals and piano, Brian May, who was guitar and vocals, Roger Taylor, who was drums and vocals as well, and lastly, John Deacon, who was just bass guitar. Before forming Queen, May and Taylor had played together in a band called Smile. Mercury was a fan of Smile and encouraged them to experiment with more elaborate stage and recording techniques. He then later joined in 1970 and suggested the name Queen. Their earliest works were influenced by progressive rock, hard rock, heavy metal, but the band generally ventured into more conventional and radio-friendly works by incorporating further styles, such as arena rock and pop rock. Queen drew artistic influence from British rock acts of the 1960s and the early 1970s, such as The Beatles, The Kinks, Cream, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, The Who, Black Sabbath, Slade, Deep Purple, David Bowie, Genesis, and many more artists. Freddie Mercury was disappointingly quiet about politics and might have missed some opportunities to become an agent of change for the issues of gay acceptance and battle against AIDS, who he had then passed away in 1991 from AIDS. He was a strong supporter of the British monarchy and would be considered a liberal if he was still alive to this day. The song, I Want to Break Free, has become an LGBTQ anthem and Monterey by to live by with LGBTQ entertainment sites, even using in his their own domain. Queen drummer Roger Taylor has released his new solo single, Gangsters Are Running the World. The track, his first new music in more than five years. Featured lyrics that address the state of the world. And the lyrics say, there's blood in the streets, panic in the air, the markets are trading up in madness and fear. Taylor sings in the new song. It is not the first time that Taylor has made political statements in his material, and in 1994 he released his single, Nazis, while his 1998 album, Electric Fire, featured a cover of John Lennon's Working Class Hero. During such a divide time in the 80s, Mercury doning this look on national television was inspirational. His use of drag, leather torsos, and the retards oozed empowerment with a disregard of gender binaries. He wore tops to expose his hairy chest and jeans that were stapled in his onstage wardrobe. He brought aesthetic accessories as a reference towards BDSM, leather, culture, and while being embodied a masculine look, this was widely associated with gay style subcultures in the 1980s. The inaugurous look was still crawling in the artsy circles back then, but Freddie Mercury wore with the same ease and self-confidence women's clothes and makeup, as well as men's entire revolutionary, revolutionary the way men dress. Colorful jackets, fancy hats, and heels migrated to men's wardrobes and became mainstream. The band had never made it a problem to Freddie Mercury, however he ever wanted to express himself, he wanted to. And as well as Freddie Mercury came from some from another part of the world and then um, lived in London, he thought it was a great time to finally explore himself and understand where he finally came from. And... During this fashion trend, not only were they making it big in, um, over there in Europe, but they're also making it big over in the United States, making still, to this day, one of the best well-known groups, um, I believe, in music industry. And I hope you guys enjoyed my Queen report and a little bit of know about them. Thank you.